Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the next methods of the irrigation. That is the furrow irrigation, sprinkler irrigation and the drip irrigation. So let's start. So the first point of discussion is the furrow irrigation. So the first point of discussion is the furrow irrigation. Now as we have discussed in the previous four methods, the entire field was covered with the water while in the case of this furrow irrigation only the one fifth part or half of the land surface is wetted and let's say if this is the land part on which the irrigation has to be carried out so if the lesser area of the land if that is being covered by the water that means there will be lesser chances of the evaporation there will be lesser ponding which will be created over there and as we are having the area which is not wetted so these will be the furrows in between which we will be providing the water so as the entire area is not wetted so it permits the cultivation sooner after the irrigation now what are these furrows so these furrows are the narrow field ditches that means we will excavate certain area in the field which is excavated between the rows of the plants now these ditches they may vary from 8 to 30 cm in case of their depth and in case of their length they may be as much as 400 meters long that means depending upon the field size it can vary now the spacing of the furrows that means these narrow field ditches that will depend upon the spacing of the crop how much spacing are we having on to the field between the different crops that will decide the spacing of the furrows and if we provide the excessively long furrows that results in the percolation at the upper end because if let's say this is the ditch that we are creating so water will be coming from one direction so let's say this is the upper end and obviously the other one will be the lower end so as the water will be entering through the upper end so as it moves in the downward direction the water which is present in the upper end that will percolate into the ground so the entire water it may be possible that the it gets absorbed within the soil without even reaching the lower end so that's why excessively long furrows are avoided and these type of irrigation methods are used only for the crops which are cultivated along the rows for example, the sugarcane, potato or maize, these are the type of crops which are used, which use the furrow irrigation. Now the deep furrows are suitable for the row crops. That means, let's say this is the excavated part, this is the field. So this is the depth of the furrow. Now this will be the deep furrow and this will be the smaller furrow. This is deep and this is small. So the deeper furrows they are suitable for the row crops that means the crops which are sown within the row while the small furrows they are suitable for relatively irregular topography that means if their land is not regular this is the topography or for the close growing crops if you look at the image of the furrow irrigation now these are the excavated part now this is known as the furrow which is the supply ditch so this is the one furrow and on the domes which are created by the excavation of these furrows the higher elevation part this elevated part this will be allowed to have the crops and in between them the furrows will be providing the irrigation water now if you look at this in this way Now if you look at this way, these two portions they are representing the crop. Now this is the root zone of these crops. So the part that I am highlighting that is the root zone of the plants. And in between the furrows we will be providing the irrigation water. Now this irrigation water that will be seeping through these earthen boundaries and it will be reaching directly to the root zone. And since we are not covering the entire field that's why there are lesser chances of the evaporation or the percolation. And the next type of irrigation technique is the sprinkler irrigation. Now, 
the sprinkler irrigation is basically the most efficient form of surface irrigation because in this form the water is applied to the soil in the form of a water spray which is sprayed through a network of pipes and the pumps and it resembles the artificial rain and that's why it is a costly process because it involves the technology as well as the network of pipes and pumps although this can be used for the all types of soil and for the different range of the topography and the slopes however this is not efficiently utilized in the indian subcontinent because of its costly nature it fulfills the normal requirement of the uniformly distribution of the water because we want that the each part of the land that should get the equal amount of the water however in other methods of the irrigation this is not possible but in case of the sprinkler irrigation it can be achieved now as the water is applied in the form of the spray that's why the losses which are mainly due to the seepage and the evaporation they are very low and that's why this is the best method of the surface irrigation now there are certain conditions which favor the adoption of this type of irrigation method what are those so if you are having the irregular topography now if let's say this is the topography nature so in this case if you flood the entire field so the water will be stagnant at this level or if you allow the water to get up to this level then this crop which will be over this field on the left side that will be completely immersed into the water so that's why the surface irrigation method other than the sprinkler irrigation method that those will not be suitable in this case so in that case we tend to opt for the sprinkler irrigation second one at the steeper land gradient now if this is the land gradient now in now at this steeper land gradient if you flood the entire field if you flood the entire field then the velocity of the water that is flowing on this land gradient that will be very high and that may erode the soil strata which is lying over this gradient that's why we prefer the water spray techniques on this type of land gradient so that is the second condition third condition is when the soil is excessively permeable if the soil is excessively permeable that means if you flood the field then and the entire water that gets percolated within the soil in those condition you provide the lesser amount of water so that it is efficiently utilized for the plants crop otherwise that will tend to increase the level of the water table fourth point is related to the earlier point that means when the water table is very high so if the water table is already high in that case we cannot provide the surface irrigation or the flooding irrigation because in that case water table that means the water level below the ground surface that is already very high and in that case if you provide the water on the surface then it will create the chances of the flooding because a lesser amount of water will get percolated that's why in that case also we provide the sprinkler irrigation or if the seasonal water requirement that means if the rainfall is sufficient and the seasonal water requirement is low in that case also we prefer the sprinkler irrigation or the other condition may be that when we are growing the crops which require the humidity control that means we require the lesser amount of water as in the case of the tobacco crop so in that case sprinkler irrigation is preferred or the if the crops are having the shallow roots that means they do not require higher amount of water or if the crops are requiring high and the frequent irrigation that means you need to irrigate the field very frequently which is not possible in case of the flooding irrigation that's why in that case also the sprinkler irrigation technique is adopted and the last case will be when the water is available with difficulty or it is scarce for example in case of the desert part of the country that is mostly adopted in the case of the rajasthan although this technique is very costly that's why not adopted by the ordinary farmers but this is an efficient method so this is the tech so this is a typical sprinkler layout which has been installed within a field so as you can see here these are the certain pipes which are carrying the system this is the sprinkler which is mounted over the pipe now with the help of this sprinkler the water will be coming out of that sprinkler and that will be rotating so the each part will be getting the equal amount of the water 
and this type of pipeline this network of pipe that is being laid within the field now depending upon the spread of the pipelines there are different types of sprinkler system the first one being the permanent system if the pipes are buried permanently such that they do not interfere in the farming or if let's say this is the ground level and the pipes are laid below the ground level and only the lateral or the sprinkler part is coming out and that is only throwing out the water then that type of sprinkler system is known as the permanent system second one is the semi permanent system if only the main lines are buried in the ground while the laterals are portable that means these are the main lines and if you look at the plan if i am draw the plan so these will be the main lines this is also one main line and they are connected with the help of the laterals so these two are the main lines while the pipes which are connecting the main lines they are known as the laterals so these laterals are movable that means you can shift this lateral and place it over here and then connect it to the main line you can shift this lateral pipeline to this main line at this point so this can be done with the help of the laterals so that type of system that is known as the semi permanent system and the third one is known as the portable system if the entire network that means the mains as well as the laterals both are portable and they can be moved from farm to farm then that type of sprinkler system is known as the portable system now if we look at the advantages of the sprinkler irrigation system they can be as the water that we are using that is a very minimal amount of the water because it is used in the form of the spray of the water that's why the seepage losses that means the water which was getting percolated if this was the ground level and this was the level of water which was flooded over here some amount of the water that was getting percolated within the ground so that type of losses they will be eliminated and only the optimum quality of the water that will be used second here no land leveling is required because let's say if we were talking about the furrow irrigation if this was the land level then we need to excavate this part so that the water can be filled out in this form so this part of the soil that was removed and that may also include the top fertile soil so that is avoided in case of the sprinkler irrigation also the cultivation area is not lost because here this area is also used for sowing the crops therefore it increases the crop area by 16% now the water which is applied that is applied at a rate lesser than the rate of the infiltration capacity that means let's say if within 1 hour 6 cm of the water that is getting percolated so we will apply only the 5 cm of water within the 1 hour so that within the 1 hour entire water which we are providing onto the field that is get completely percolated within the soil so that the surface runoff that is avoided next advantage is that the use of the fertilizer that can be very efficient because we can mix it with the water within the pipelines and after that it will be sprayed uniformly throughout the field now this type of technique it leaches down the salts and it prevents the water logging that means the accumulation of the water that is prevented the water logging is basically the accumulation of water over the field that is avoided in case of the sprinkler irrigation this method of irrigation involves technology but this is less labor oriented and since the manual labor is reduced therefore it gives us higher efficiency that is up to 80% now what is this efficiency that means the water which we are applying out of that 100 parts of the water 80% of the water that can be stored in the root zone of the plants now if there are certain advantages associated with sprinkler irrigation that means there will also be certain disadvantages now look at those so what are those limitations now if you look at the network of the sprinkler pattern if there are high winds which are blowing then they may distort the sprinkler pattern now if one sprinkler was placed in this case let's say if this was the direction of the sprinkler and this was the sprinkler now in this direction this was irrigating the field now if 
because of the higher winds the assembly or the direction of the sprinkler that changes and it now rotates in this direction and now it irrigates the field in this direction and in this direction there was already one sprinkler which was present then in this case it will be causing the non uniform spreading of the water on the crops also it is not suited to the crops which require larger depth of the irrigation that means if certain crops require the larger depth of the water for example if you look at the rice or the paddy that we commonly know that means in that crop we require the larger depth of the water therefore it would not be suitable to use the sprinkler irrigation then the third limitation is that the initial cost because it involves machinery therefore initial cost is very high which require high technical skills also the water that we are using that is to be used the free of sand and silt because if let's say this is the water which is coming out of the pipeline now this is the water if there are certain particles of the sand or the silt they will be getting accumulated at the entry or within the certain area of the pipe and once they completely get settled they will be choking the pipeline therefore there will be chances of the clogging also we are using the pumps that means it will be requiring the electrical power and in this case the power required will be higher then the heavy soil with the poor intake they cannot be irrigated efficiently that means if let's say the percolation quality if that is not very high then the entire water that we are spraying that will be collecting over the field only and in case of the area of the high temperature and high wind velocity that means if the wind velocity is very very high and the temperature is very high so that the water which is getting out of the sprinkler that is getting evaporated within the atmosphere in the air only then there may be considerable evaporation losses that means even before touching the ground the water is getting evaporated that is the limitation of the sprinkler irrigation so we have completely discussed about the sprinkler irrigation now the last method of the irrigation is the drip irrigation now drip irrigation that is also known as the trickle irrigation now it is the latest field irrigation technique which has come of the age now and it is adopted where the acute scarcity of the irrigation water is present that means for example it is mostly used in the desert areas or the areas where the water level or the water table level that is very low and in case of india this technique can be efficiently used in the parts of the rajasthan now in this case the water is applied slowly and directly to the root zone of the plants as you can see here this is the network of the drip irrigation in which the water that will be seeping down from the pipeline and that will be percolating directly into the root zone of the plants so there is minimal losses of the evaporation as well as of the percolation and because of that the efficiency is very high so that it is up to the range of the 90 to 95% now here also as the network of pipe is laid out therefore the cost which is involved that is very high and that is the reason it is not so popular in the indian subcontinent because of the most of the population of the farming sector belonging to the ordinary income levels and it uses a system of the head mains sub mains laterals and the drip nozzles that means the nozzles through which the water will be dripping out in the form of the drops so that completes the entire methods of the irrigation now in the next video we will look at the planning of the irrigation and the bandhara irrigation technique thank you